Welcome, welcome, welcome to Kickstarter Radio 102.4. I'm Lipstick Paddy, your host today, and we are looking at Dark Ages. Oh man, this is a huge game. Huge. 4X. Eat your heart out across Europe. Oh man, so exciting. Um... Now, there's no intro today for this game because this is a five-day campaign. So we are getting this out the gate as quick as we can for you peeps. Hope you appreciate that. Um, but yeah, name is Dark Ages. And you Dark Ages is split in two boxes. So you need to get the two boxes to really get the full vision of the game. They are going to have daily unlocks through the five days so it's going to be uncovering really cool stuff and um, yeah 4x but over across europe in medieval times we're all excited here at the studio and ooh, let's take a look to see what it's like right after this the next social stretch goal on KISS 102.4 is the 250 subscriber. Subscribe today and unlock new music that will change the music in all the videos in the future. You could be part of the evolution. Alright, Dark Ages! Five days to go! 400 backers. Not too shabby, as it only just launched recently. This has been pushed straight to on our schedule. Our schedule this week has been all rearranged. You may notice this week, if you watched the live show last week. Um, and the reason for that is that this game is huge. Now, <clears throat> they do have a one, well, it's not a one, they want a $10 pledge to access the pledge manager. Um, so if finances are low, then the $10 is a way to get in on this project <clears throat> and pay for later. It's certainly, I guess the pledge manager is going to be open long. This is not coming out until March 2021, so it is a good year away. But potentially, we're going to have a lot of like pledge manager pledges of $1 to $10 <laughs> through these first months. Hey. All right, so what is it? Well, it is two boxes or one of each. Um, you don't really, I don't know. If I'm going for this, I've got to get two. I've got to get two. Why have you got to get two? Because that's the real vision of the game is the two, which we'll see when we go down. You can, of course, just get one of them, but why would you? Interesting 12 plus on this, so um, someone just starting secondary school or upper school can certainly play this. It does have a historical charm and uh, it certainly is crowdfunded limited. I mean, this $88 box, for example, I this would be over $100 at retail and it, it's only going to see retail if it gets over 10,000 backers. 10,000 backers, no chance in five days no chance you know one of the ways to get to retail is have a longer campaign so your backers can grow you know is five days enough time for this project to breathe on kickstarter with all that is happening well, we'll sure see interesting video i do like it when one of the army tries to cross the land and then it rips up the land rips up because that's the, the land that you can see my soldier is from the other box. <laughs> it's like, what's happening to the world? <laughs> anyway, it is very cool. You can see this kind of medieval text here as it is in the medieval world. And um, Mini's looking very cool. This company is Polish and uh, the Polish team seem to be knocking it out of the park when it comes to Mini's. Um, they're really up in the game in Poland. Oh, man, these orange minis just look wicked, don't they? <laughs> Do you look cool? Now, I don't know why you'd paint your houses this colour. You, 
you know, that could potentially be thatched on the top, so it would be like um, the colour of this grass here. Obviously wood down here, a bit of stone on the corners. Um, you could really paint these up really nice, and we'll come to, we'll come to, I wouldn't have these painted by the way, is what I'm trying to say here, they have a painted option. Um, do they have a painted option? I'm completely confused. They don't have a painted option. <laughs> These pictures are confusing me. But um, yeah, you would have to paint them yourself to get this great, greater detail down. And you can still find these houses in Europe, of course. They still last. They've, they've lasted the length of time. So here's the, the first box, and it's mainland Europe. I'll call it that because we do have an Eastern Europe now, which is the old Russian block, but we're not looking at that on this expansion. <laughs> I don't think that was part of medieval history, or certainly it wasn't taught at school. Um, if you had school in Europe, that is. Um, so, so basically, what you are doing is you are, you are a civilization that is warring across the map, but you are you're going to be there's limited space on the maps these like white cubes we'll see as you go down where you can build things um build cities and also put manufacturing down to pump out um different manufacturing goods and you probably have a supply line running through the, the countries that you've conquered so you're spreading across the map now this map at the minute just looks so limited and it really is just cut off from the main game. I don't think the original vision was to create two boxes like this. They were just worried, um, I guess, of the high price of the big box. This is the other box. It joins up perfectly. Um, it'd be interesting to see how the score, you see the score chart going around the edge here. It'd be interesting to see how that lines up with the other one. That might be the only weird bit when you're connecting them together. Um, but when you go from one box to the next, they do have a unique set of units, unique set of cards, unique heroes, unique boards. It pushes it to eight players instead of four. So uh, it, it is completely different culture, different technologies from this other board. Very cool. Now it's going to show you what's in here. We get the oh yeah, Central European map. This here, look, orange, green, and pink. Orange, green, and pink. But up here, it's kind of pastel coloured. So why are they showing us this high? It looks like the image has been. I don't know. Is this an earlier board? <laughs> it's more vibrant. It looks worse. Than the board up there so why have you given us this worse looking board it's obviously hot. low resolution you can't even read these numbers here this picture is poo poo culture board um yeah you're going to be getting culture by doing things like creating more goods for selling and uh, putting churches down um Lots of cool things. The game is very deep, but simplified for, again, a 12-year-old who's just joining secondary school. Now, you are certainly going to have grand minis on the map, and um, interesting, you know, you're going to have a lot of these on the map. I didn't expect these to look different or in different poses that would have nailed it for me if they all came in unique poses <laughs> but I guess the I don't know is it gonna come in a box with um, you know how are they gonna be boxed if they came in a bag you could have a super individual but if you're you're limited if you're putting them inside a tray a molded tray that they all have to be similar if you've got a lot of these but, um, yeah, I do like these horses too. They look cool. And you do get your hero units, the commander. This text here is too close to this. You think 20 unique minis, like this four? Because just put a section underneath to make these more clear. Because you don't... You know, when I first came in here, I was getting a little bit confused. Because my window can only show me... You know this 
I, so I'm not sure. This is 24 units, look, they're on horses, this is not archers. But, um, <laughs> I don't know, it could have been done a little bit better, so. City minis that you're putting up. You can upgrade these to put um, the keeps around these. You'll see this happening in the video at the top, how this city mini can get upgraded. And um, you can put farms out on the map for your food, church for cultures, wood production, getting resources, leather production for resources, stone production too, and iron also. So there's, there's gonna be an interesting um, mechanics here of all the goods moving around. Uh, specialized building, these are historical things. It lists all the, what these are down below. They are actual historical buildings. Uh, these wooden discs are, you'll see these, they're on a kind of a worker placement light board. It's kind of a unique innovation that they've got going on down. 15 dice in three dull. These are just so dull. Now they are doing, um, they have an interesting stretch goals, which we'll, we'll go down to, but hopefully we'll see some um, custom dice come out of this. Uh, would be really nice. Now, Barbarian token. Oh, would have been nice to have Barbarian minis. Maybe this will get unlocked. I'll put as an add-on. It's, it's, it's mini heavy, and then when he comes to Barbarians, 25. <laughs> and we're going to see gold coins, and um, you know people are going to just upgrade these up to miniatures of representing this stuff. I, I wonder if there is going to be a token upgrade pack that they offer. Um, the five days seems to be loaded with daily updates, as we'll see when we go down. Um, five action cards. So, do you want to build? Do you want to research? Do you want to maneuver? Develop your culture? Or do you want to recruit? Mm -hmm. These tile cards are where you're going to be starting on the map. And, see what I mean about these images being too big and then the little thing underneath. Anyway. Um, these culture cards, again, unique to each box, unique from the regions you're in. And um, if you see this card here, oh, these images really do suffer from low quality. Now, this advanced farming here, it's got level one here. And this slots um, underneath your player board. So this one is showing. And a bit like... Well, when you level it up, basically, you slide the card up so it's showing level two. And if you upgrade it again, you're going to slide the card almost out of your player one where it's showing your level three. So each of these culture cards, well, not each of them, but, you know, a lot of them that are potentially construction or um, cultural buildings, etc. They're going to have this kind of unique upgrade as, um, as you can develop through the playtime, which is nice. Again, this high raster, you know, high, um, vibrant, looks nothing like the board at the top that you're showing. It, it just looks, it looks real. I don't know, look at this. It's still super low res. Can't even read the numbers. Can't read anything on here. This one's interesting. We do have shipping lanes on this one. You can see going from England down to Spain. No shipping at all in the Mediterranean. Let's go. Well, there's a little bit of shipping here. Italy across to, I don't know who that is across there. I want to say Greece, but I think it isn't Greece. <laughs> Sorry, my geography. Central Europe, not great out that way. Hmm, okay. My apologies if you, you know, <laughs> if you know it. Da, 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 ba, ba, ba. Yeah, so these cards are just going to slot above the, the culture board here. Now, these player boards, they do look a little bit generic at the top, don't they? Yes, they 
do. Would it be nice to have a little bit more, make them more countrified? I, I don't know if that's going to fit in with what they're doing, but um, they seem to be quite meaty large, don't they? A lot going on here with the different buildings you can build. Um, so it doesn't look like you can steal technologies. Maybe there's a lot still to to know about this game if it's as high civilization, and you will see that there is some interesting mechanics in the stretch goals. So they could be teaching us part of the game as we go through. It's five days. So keep an eye on it. So loads of different things again. More of these construction things, unique buildings. And more regular retail dice. Ooh. All right. All top, all types of different culture again. Look at this. War horses. You're upgrading your war horses. They have upgrades as well. So advanced farming for as well. That one there looks cool. Totally looks cool. Lots of depth. This is what the real customer is in for. The two boxes, one monster game. Oh, the Holy Roman Empire and the legacy of Charlemagne. Oh, is a full and complete game that we had to split up into two because we thought it was a bit too expensive over five days. <laughs> this is a bit wrong here though. It says each of the two dark boxes, Holy Roman, is a full and... Oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Okay, they're all full and unique, we understand that. But what you should be saying here is, because you're introducing the big monster game, is you can put these two together and it's a one to eight player. Just highlighting here the content is different in both boxes. And you can see they go right together, but how does that score track work? <laughs> Why are there shipping lanes across the Mediterranean? It seems odd. It does seem odd. And you can see England here is also dealing with, I guess that's the Netherlands, France, Belgium in between. Here we can see, you can see the colours here, darker, lighter, more pastel here. Looks massive, doesn't it? There's no kind of dimensions of what this thing looks like, how big it is on the table, and you can see the eight player boards here. Cards popping out here with technologies also. And um, we also can, on this table presence here, we can also not see all your other units that you're hiding away somewhere. You're also going to notice that each player kind of has their own section of dice here, so you're only going to have two sets. So, are you going to need more sets for more players? This is definitely going to be a pass the dice <laughs> around the board. And also, this big board here, um, this is going to be shared by everybody. How are these players up here going to affect this? Because your discs are important here. <laughs> yeah, you are going to combine boards, combine leaders, combine technologies, combine buildings. Combine technologies. Yep, this is the innovative system of actions and reactions. You are, each player's discs are on this, um, it looks like a little mini worker placement thing. I'd love a video to explain this, and I'm, I'm guessing a lot of explanation is going to be coming out. Um, and there is that. It's gonna be interesting. Place a noble disc on one of five actions. Again, the text is below the picture what you're looking at. <laughs> I 
All right, so you're basically building, you've got units on the map, you can go into the next territory and go fighting. Um, not explaining how fighting is happening here. Is it just rolling my dice versus yours? <laughs> Infantry card here, we can't really see what's going on here. We've got one on the attack here. Can't see anything because of this big arrow. Um, upside down here, long bowman, he's got... I don't know what these things on the right are. That could be the materials to create a longbow man. And on the right here, he's ranged. And he got one attack. So it looks very basic. You can see here how you upgrade your car, just lifting it out from your board. Now look at this, it says, maneuver your units to battle barbarians. These barbarians are minis here, so ha ha! Tokens come in the box. Where are these coming from? Once your action is done. So imagine you've moved to this position here. If it, the stack contains three discs, slide the bottom one out to perform one of the two available. So you can only go left and right. It's like a closed off rondelle. It doesn't complete one end to the other. Um, so you've got to kind of be going down this path. So let's say I I move my token on the top here and the token at the bottom is another player that has already moved this turn. Well that token has to move. This is what they're saying. So even if it's not your turn, it could be your turn if a if something gets stacked as a three. Um, so yeah, moving across here. Yeah, a quick basic. You can sell goods, recruit a new unit, take wood or stone. You can take one card from the culture track, regroup, check something, apply level, can't see because of that, but lots of potential things you can do in one turn. Play test of the rules is on Google Drive. I'll let you explore that yourself. It's fairly heavy and um, we do have some probably better for you is tutorials here. Now sadly he's only got the Holy Roman Empire. But yeah, you can see how, how beautiful the cards are here in this video. Why is the video so much better quality than your own Kickstarter? <laughs> Let's see how big this board is. Are you going to zoom out for us? Then? Hang on, look. You can see this card here. Five movement. Can't do range. We've got six. Plus six on the attack. He needs two leather and an iron to make one of them, maybe. Mm -hmm. Alright. And this map look, it does look very garish. Too heavy this colour. <laughs> you really didn't need to lighten it. If you look at Civilization on the PC, what they've done is, say this is the green area. They have beautifully graphicalized this. And the only thing representing the green area is the borders. And when borders come together, green and red, the actual line of the border is a green and red line. That is so much more cleaner looking than what you've got here. Look how Civilization uses this. It's had many games in its series to innovate on how borders should look, and it's very close to how a board game in a computer game would work anyway. So, <clears throat> these colors aren't hot at all. I, I, you know, I would actually prefer if you did the Civilization route and got rid of these strong colors. You know, or, yeah, that's my opinion. So, sadly, we don't have 
a video of the massive board put together. That would have been great to see the, the, how big it was on the table. Oh, well, still time in this short campaign. Here are all the buildings. Now, the pledge level, they want $10. It says you will have the same prices and shipping costs. So don't worry about that. The pledge, late pledges, will only be available through the pre-order system. What does this mean? Oh, late pledges without the house call, $10 pledge, will only be available through the pre-order system. I'm guessing that is more expensive if you do the pre-order system. So many plastic minis. 162, that is a lot of money. You can see why they did split it up into two boxes. But yeah, $10 pledge it and you're gonna be getting 576 plastic minis. This is gonna take up a lot of table space, side tables to keep the minis on. <laughs> Super big. I do like this, they're offering um, sleeves and they're doing a, a cheaper sleeve pack if you get in the two boxes love it stretch goals adding these transient units uh, is that the barbarians transit uh, move around the map <laughs> Here we go, social stretch goal, Barbarian Skirmishers module. Not these tokens though, what's this? Social stretch goal already been made, alliances, certainly if you're playing eight players, it'd be helpful to trade between two. Or do a, certainly a defensive pact. The Pope, this is interesting, isn't it? How this is gonna hit, add religion. How's this going to affect the religion in the game? Fibonacci, um, mathematics. I don't know what well, this is, adding another line of technology. And here we go, daily unlocks, none yet. <laughs> we're still on day zero. Day one's not ended yet, so we'll get this tomorrow. Or sometime today. Why are you putting all these shipping costs in? We've still got boxes and stuff, have we? Is that it? It is. Research, what are you talking about? <laughs> yes, potentially more add-ons are coming. Yes. All right, there you go. We had to cover this early because the team was very excited about this. We are going to be learning all about this this week. It's ending on Saturday in the afternoon so it's oh, I don't think it's gonna make this week on on Saturday with our new launch days of uh, you know we launch our, our videos at, we don't launch them at midnight anymore we launch them at um, around about 10 24 the hour the <laughs> mountain time that's why we're getting this out early to you this is like almost a day one test um, that we've got for our big stretch goal at 750 which we'll be doing a live one of Gloomhaven and we're basically doing this as a test to see how quickly we can turn this around um, and how we can kind of advance on that and do improvements for that video when we're doing it. Alright this is Dark Ages it does look amazing doesn't it we do need to know more about it we're certainly excited to see what's going to be happening in the campaign and I'm guessing that on the last day is when this pledge is going to explode. So um, yeah, look forward to that. If you are certainly excited by what you see here on the last day, $10 is the pledge to go in and you, you've almost got the whole year um, to pledge for it. So, you know, take that. 
and as part of your strategy. So here we go, Dark Ages, a massive civilization game spread over two boxes. Oh, it's going to look huge on the table when you put them two together. And it does, it does say, put them both together and it's a four hour game. Ooh, that's big. So yeah, this is a meaty, meaty game. Eight, four hours. Wow, 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 wow. And since we've gone down to the bottom back up, 25 backers have come. So this this is certainly hotting up. Dark ages. Wow, 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 wow. Another Kickstarter pops out this year, 2020. That looks incredible. All right. Well, you listen to Kickstarter Radio 1 and 2.4. I'm Lipstick Paddy. You take care. Stay safe. And bye-bye for now.